Hello there, my name is Cody Harris and today we're going to be talking about how to drive a team of horses. Now, it may not be the main mode of transportation in most places these days, but there is one place in northern Michigan where it still is, and that's Mackinac Island. Well, we made it to the island. Now, as you all know, if you want to learn something right, you have to learn it from the best. So today, we're going to be learning from the professionals at the Grand Hotel. Okay, guys, here we are at the Grand Hotel stables. And it looks like Shelby's getting ready to leave. Let's go on inside and see what's happening. After thoroughly brushing and cleaning your horse, you're ready to harness. Here we have the bridle. These are the blinders that we use on the horses. They keep the horse a little bit more calm, a little bit more focused while we're going down the road. The bit is what we actually use to steer the horse. This is the hames and the collar. This is what the horse actually uses to pull the carriage forward on his shoulders. These are the traces here, and this is what connects us to our carriage, allows us to go forward. This is the britchin. It allows the horse to back up or hold the carriage up on the hills if need be. And our back saddle just kind of ties everything together here in the center. When hooking your team, you want to work as efficiently as possible and avoid any distractions. First, start by buckling the lines, then attaching the yoke, and finally, hook the traces to the carriage. There's two main styles of driving, the English and American. The American style, you hold a line in each hand. You take with the left and give with the right to turn the horse left, and take with the right and give with the left to turn the horse right. Imagine you're holding a frisbee out in front of you and you're rotating it in place. The second style is the English. This is what we call Achenbach. You hold both lines in one hand and it's much like steering a ship using a rudder. Sliding your hands to the left applies pressure on the right hand side of the horse to turn right. Sliding your hand to the right puts pressure on the left hand side of the horse, turning the horse left. All right, Shelby, so we're coming around this curve about to head down the hill. What's some of the tips you have for a good braking technique? The biggest thing you want to do is you want to watch your traces and specifically the chain part of the traces, um, you want them to be in a straight line but not super tight. If you have too much brake, I'll show you right now, the carriage will actually pull on the horse's neck which makes them do more work. If you have not enough brake, the carriage ends up riding up, the horses will have to hold the carriage back and you'll see that the traces have a big loop shape to them and you don't want that. that, that's also more work for the horses. When you have them about the right spot, the traces, like I said, will be in a straight line and the horses are just walking along. They're not actually doing any work at that point. So, when you guys are out shopping for your horses, there's a couple of things you want to keep an eye out for. You want them to be about the same size. You want them to have about the same height on their hips, as well as their withers. Their withers being the base of their neck. That's right. You want horses to be about the same height, as well as width, in both their hips and their withers. Um, if you have a horse that's significantly smaller than the other one, the horse isn't actually helping as much as they could be. Instead, they're just trying to keep up with the other one all day. It's important to keep your horse and harness clean. It keeps the horse more comfortable as he's working and it also helps prevent any abrasions or chafing. Well that does it for this segment of How To. Now you know a few basics of how to drive a team of horses. A big thank you to the Grand Hotel and all the folks here at the Grand Hotel Stables. Mm -hmm.